Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title of this video, this video is going to be a little bit different than usual. So today I want to make a story time video and speak a little bit about my past, speak a little bit about uh, how I got the record deal, how I was dropped by Universal, how it changed and affected my life on the long term, um, about my depression, about all, all the obstacles uh, before and after um, the record deal thing, and why I in the end landed up in Singapore. Yeah, so why I decided to share this actually with you because I believe that it's really important to tell your story in order to help other people. Uh, I always say hashtag weaponize your voice because I think everyone has a voice and we should learn to speak up for us, for others as well. And sometimes by sharing your story and your experiences, you really help out other people that are in the same or different situations. Um, sometimes, you know, you are taking a different, uh, a complete other path that you didn't want it, but it turns out it's the best thing that ever happened. Uh, sometimes dreams do really break, sometimes do, dreams don't come true, but sometimes better dreams just occur, you know? And this is actually what happened with my story, and so I would like to share it with you. So, um, a first thing, first, we're just gonna have a small, re real, <laughs> small recap of uh, how I got to the record deal. So I was always a kind of singer and theater and musical and dance and I went to performing schools when I was already like a nine, ten years old uh, and on stage in Hamburg, Germany. I am from Hamburg, Germany. And um, I started out very early to sing and dance and do all those performing arts stuff. So let's just skip into that more important part is how I met my producer and how that all thing started. So I always wanted to have a music career that was my big dream, that was my main goal, that was my my life goal actually. I always knew um, that I wanted to be a performer, a famous performer, a singer. And when I was 12 years old, I think, and I saw um, a very special um, a special show called the the Echo. That is a, a prize that you can get as a newcomer or a best singer or whatsoever. So something like the German Grammys. That was my dream. I knew that I one day wanted to have an, um, an, an echo. So I never actually get the echo, but I met the producers and I had the wonderful chance to hold the echo in my hands because <laughs> I was about to work with them and unfortunately it didn't turn out. But we will go to, the, to this in one second. So basically, yeah, that, so that, that was my, my, my main goal. I was always very um, egomanic with this dream. So this dream really made my whole life. and. For me, um, being a singer was so important that I felt if I'm not going to succeed living this dream, my life would be absolutely worthless. So that was the mindset that I had when I was a teenager and then later when, when um, till that record deal crashed, my mindset was very ecumenic. I always wanted to be, be a performing artist, a singer and that is known and have received recognition. So when I was 14 years old, my mom and I went into a um, home recording studio that was at the time, you know, millennium time, I think um, 2004, 2000, yeah, around about 2003, two, yeah, 2003. So we went into a home studio and uh, we recorded like three singles, really plain, nothing special, not really good at all. But you know, you can see there was like a kind of a raw talent, uh, you know, whatever my producer saw in me at that time. Um, then forward, when I was 15 years old, I made an internship at, at a post-production in Hamburg. So I thought, well, whenever, if I'm not gonna be a singer one day, I always would love to be a director for theater or movies. So I decided I'm gonna make an internship there. And one day I brought a CD with me where all those three singles um, have been recorded. And I, I spoke with the, with the lady that would take care of me in the whole internship and she said to me, oh well, let me listen to it. Uh, I maybe can help you out. Uh, I know someone who, who always looks for uh, raw talents. And I'm like, oh my god, that would be just absolutely crazy and amazing and stuff like that. Um, so I, yeah, I showed her those singles. She called then my former producer, and on the next day, he really came there to this internship. That was a really special moment. I was really young. I didn't know how to handle those situations. You know, you know how the thing. Yeah, you know, you're just young <laughs> and um, unexperienced and. Uh, 
I didn't took it really serious, so I never really called him actually. In, in fact, I lost his number because I didn't thought it might be serious, right? You hear those stories about producers. And so one year later, we just we got in touch again. I can't I don't remember how because I was 16, but I'm almost 30. Um, and we got in touch again and we started to work from there on till I was 25 years old. So that's quite a really big major time, right? Um, so the first thing that I remember my producer asked me was, so what kind of music do you like? What would you like to record? What would you like to do? And I was always a big fan of pop rock. Well, later in the, my performing arts, when I studied, of course, of course, the musical was a major part in it, and, and theater and all that stuff. But personally, I was always a rock listener, rock pop, David Bowie, Queen, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, and I loved all those 80s, 90s rock, that was a big thing, Bon Jovi, you know, kind of all, the, all that uh, part. So I always wanted to go a little bit into pop rock. And from there on, actually, our journey started into producing music. And within, within those whole year, I mean, that's almost a decade, right? Um, I think we recorded so many songs, you could feel like two albums only with those songs. So that's, that's what, what was a big, you know, it was a really big thing because I had the possibility uh, to be discovered by a producer who invested all his time and his uh, life and his, his money. And it was also his dream to, um, you know, to take care of an artist and to produce an artist and, you know, see that artist grow and then develop and then, you know, be signed one day. So, of course, our major goal was to be signed at a record deal. So, time passes by, we were always producing, um, uh, and then somehow it went really frequently and it went to like kind of a, a really full time thing, right? Well, I was still made in school, right? But, um, then I would be also in the studio and recording German uh, pop rock things. It was really, really hard to find someone who would sign us, who would be interested in us. Because one major thing was, um, I was, a, as an artist, not really developed. Because I was young, I was 18, 19, I was growing into my 20s, I had no idea who I am, what I wanted in life, where life goes, where is exactly my um, music, where do I see myself. So as an artist it's really important that you kind of know what you want musically and f what do you stand for, you know, what's your message to, to the world. I did have a clear message but somehow it wouldn't work with the way I looked and with sometimes with the way I behave. So it was really, you know, sometimes I was just trying to grow into being an artist and that was kind of really difficult so you know the the 18 19 20 21 all of those years where you're trying to 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 find um to find yourself in life right sorry if my english is sometimes not really on point well um so that one major part was of course music producing and then i was already starting to study oh when, I, when i'm done when i was done with school and that everything came like, like simu simultaneously. So we found a manager and then we got signed with that manager who also had a boy band at that time. That boy band, that name was Part 6 and they just signed a record deal with Universal Music and I really remember that one time I saw them um, before I went to school in the morning. Uh, I was 16 or no, I was already 17 or something. I saw them in the morning. Um, on TV before I went to school because they just released freshly their single and I'm like oh my god those guys are so hot I would love to work to you know just to know them and then I just didn't, don't know I just told my producer about it and he said well I know the producer of them and I'm like oh my god so this kind of stories this kind of accidents happen a lot of time uh, within my life sometimes you think well this just I can't believe this is just really happening anyway we signed at that management with those part six guys which there were difficult experiences that I had with those with being with them in a management because we were having occasionally some uh, performances together in Berlin and then in other cities and there were things happening that I will maybe tell in another in another um, in another video but let's go into that main point so the main point is yeah so eventually throughout the time um, we find someone who was interested in us and, and the singles that we produced. Uh, we were still into that pop rock shame, but um, I w was about to really already getting into, you know, finding a little bit more out who I am and what I wanted. 
So yeah, um, we signed with a manager who was quite really successful at the time. He worked for Columbia, he worked, he worked for Universal, he, he worked in the past for very famous German artists. And it was a great big deal and a big honor to be signed by him and have him as a manager. We had worked with him, I think, for three, four years, and he was trying to get us, you know, get us into the record, get us a record deal, basically. So then uh, we had the opportunity to um, to get signed with Universal Music um, Germany, but in another completely different niche, and that niche was pop folk. So we had quite some time to think about it if we're gonna make it change in genre, right? Because I was from pop, I was I came from pop rock and that was pop folk. And at that moment there was a big wave going on in Germany, um, a big wave pop folk wave and the music changed changed very much and to now still a lot of Germans sing now in Germany, sing a lot of pop folk nowadays. So that's when the wave really really changed into it. Also, uh, they, they wanted me as an artist and just buy out some, some singles. That's yeah, kind of that thing. You know, sometimes it happens, sometimes they just want the artist, sometimes they just want the producers, sometimes they just want the singles. I was just gonna let out some parts um, within that journey because you know it's quite 10 years, it's a lot of, to, to, to recap, it's a lot of things to say. Um, it's a long, long time basically. So to start sometimes to <laughs> do not lose track about it because it was even sadder, sadder than you think it was. So we got the wonderful chance to sign a pre-record deal, right? And um, they said, okay, we want to go, we want to let Tanya work with different producers this time. We want to send her to some of our in-house producers and see if she can get along with them, if they can create a, a vision, if they can create something, a product together, and then we can just record with her in the studio. And that's actually what happened. What happened was that I was traveling to, to, to Berlin, traveling to Flensburg to see um, a different producers team that they were in-house recommended. And everyone was a little bit unclear about about me and about my, um, you know, it's still about my image, about what we're gonna do because I was, my voice is very alto, my voice sounds very very husky, very um, very rocky when I sing. I have a typical kind of a rock voice. Um, then also my my characteristics, and it didn't match with with what people had in mind for me, you know. And I was just at that point actually ready to go with everything as long as it doesn't show a lot of nudity, right? I was just being fine being a pop folk artist and at that point I just wanted to succeed because we were already working so many years on that project and every one of us was already at, at a burnout stage and my producer, my former producer was very clear and he said if this final project with Universal is not going to succeed that will be the end of our, you know, of our work our friendship of our um, of our time together basically and my former producer was like like my mentor you know he was not only um he was not only like a friend or like like my like my uncle like my mentor yes he had a very special role in my life you know I learned I grew up with him the things he taught me he was some he was family to me a family member that I didn't have someone that really showed me the way to life I came from a very difficult household had a very difficult relationship with my mother um very really really terrible I don't like to remember it there's many things I don't speak about it but he was really something absolutely special and of course looking back now I would have turned done so many things differently okay so um no producer really had a vision and it and th they said okay let's 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 make it like this Tanya goes back to her uh, former producers and she will just create with them two singles and basically looking back now I think that was a major mistake because we all three well, my two I had actually two former producers and um, and me we were at the end end phase, you know. We were already a little bit burnt out. Creativity was a little bit lost. Uh, it was a you know, it was very tense the situation. So we worked on those two singles and, and, and on, on those two pop folk singles, and we sent them then to the Universal team for them to look at it and give it a go or a no. And I will never remember the day that I was right now. I was a, a stagecoach. I was teaching so. 
the day after I graduated, graduated in 2011, I was starting already to teach in theater um, and in vocals. These are my two major topics, um, my two major fachs. So that is the theater and that's the vocals. Um, so I was already at stage coach and I was teaching and um, we had a small little break and I received a mail. I received a mail from my manager. Um, we were, that was this particular week, it was Friday night and in this week he was about to get the feedback by the a &Rs from Universal. So it was a really tense week and it feels like from this, I remember this day in particular very much because that's how I, that's actually what I remember. I remember the last four years of my life and everything before seems like vanished. I just ignored it. Seems like this life, this life never really happened. So, um, I got this mail and I was waiting for him to tell me the final results. And then he said, you know, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. It didn't work out. Uh, we have to go separate ways and zah, 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 blah, 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 and I'm so sorry, I wish you all the best in the world. So that was kind of really sad because I wasn't even worth a phone call and I don't even have the guts anymore to, to, to call him. Um, I, I could have done a lot more with our uh, communication. I was not really good at communicating, uh, communicating like I'm now because I was always very, you know, I didn't really have the guts and I didn't want to be uh, too much needy and stuff like that. I was actually very bad at communicating. Anyway, but he sent me that mail and that was half an hour later I had my really first nervous breakdown and this feeling of, of feeling that right now you will have this nervous you just feel it like the moment what's going on with your body and you just feel okay it's gonna just I'm running against time because right now I'm just gonna have a breakdown and just gonna black out and um, I told my boss I cannot give that last hour anymore. I just have to go immediately home. Um, I'm not gonna come tomorrow, and there are uh, my life's just going down. Because at that moment, I realized that everything was just all right. I had a band. Um, we had all of those singles that we produced. I knew that I had to take out all of my music stuff, the friendship between my producers. Um, you know, everything. My whole entire life was just about to vanish within that whole day. And that was a major epic, epic shock for me. And I was really unable to do to do things at the in the moment. So I went home and I just knocked myself out. I got completely drunk. I got completely drunk, and I think I continued to drink uh, within the next days, days. And I was des desperate. I was absolutely desperate because you know it's like it's like the earth is cracking. You're losing, you're losing your ground, right? You lose everything that you worked for and fought it for so much. <clears throat> so what happened is eventually I lost everything, right? I lost, um, I needed to take everything out. There's why, there's, there's why only the life of things exist on the video. Um, I sent a mail to the band. I even couldn't call them anymore. I was at the stage where I even couldn't call them anymore. Yeah, so what happened next um, was actually very interesting. I was taking out a picture from my grandmother and I was completely drunk and I, I prayed to my dead grandmother that she please give me a sign, a sign of hope, that please something happens right now. This cannot be everything, all of those 10 years invested, the problems I had in school, the dropping out, dropping in, going to the evening school, all of those things that happened, the studies, I had a very terrible, you know, I had financial problems, a lot of financial problems, I had a lot of difficulties. Um, I was working always as a freelancer, you know, it was... Um, so we're, I, I spoke with my dad grandmother and um, I prayed for her to send me a sign. And my aunt, my aunt um, is a doctor. She, yeah, so she's a doctor for, for ladies. I don't know the English word for ladies. And she gave me uh, a number from someone that she knows that works in music or radio. She wasn't really clear about it and she was like, come on, just give it a go, try it out, call her. It was Sunday. I was still completely in my drinking mood. Um, so I called that lady and I said, oh, you know, I'm a singer like this and I just got dropped with Universal, but stuff, blah, blah. So I was explaining her the situation and um, I was speaking with her a little bit and she said, you know what, I will call you back and then I'm gonna speak with with a guy called Uwe. That's a typical German name, Uwe. And I'm like, yeah, sure, okay, 
gonna call me back. And a guy called Uwe, right. So, um, I never thought that she really is gonna call me back. Who the heck was that Uwe guy, you know? And it was just a, oh. And I was still not really sober. So she called me back on the next day. She really called me back. And she said, you know what, Tanya, it sounds so interesting. And we always look for talents. Um, I arranged a meeting with you, uh, me and Uwe at Warner Music. And now comes the really shocking part, why I believe in destiny so much, why I believe in God, why I believe that things are really made, it was one week in between. I got dropped and then the next, um, you know, the next days in between, this occurred. Well, that's not where the story ends, because, well, I started to work with a producer that works close with Warner, um, I started to work with Uvo, I started to work uh, with Rosita, and um, we started to create a project and we were five singles into that project until I completely fell into a depression. That was half a year after the record deal was dropped and then half a year later I, I couldn't hold it anymore. It was over for me. That, um, that big spark of my life, that big dream of mine just slowly disappeared and vanished. And, you know, there is something about a dream that dies because it's uh, if you have this dream all of your life, right? You, you are fighting for it and then you slowly see fading it away. You see the spark is going away. You see it's, it's dying. That's a, it's a terrible thing to witness it somehow. And um, to feel it, to be, to, you know, to know that this is actually, that was my life. People were seeing me as a singer. I was nothing else than that. I mean, I still was a teacher sim sim simultaneously because that is what I made money of. But um, yeah, so basically I got depressed and then it took me quite two years to get out of depress depression. I, uh, I started to practice the path of meditation. I uh, converted into a Hinduism. I started to get, go vegetarian and I started to create a new dream and that was to go abroad because um, I understand that I was negatively in, stuck in, in, in Hamburg. There was nothing left for me here. Um, I was completely financially broke. I was at the lowest point that I could be financially. I could not work anymore because of depression. I had problems finding jobs. And um, it, I set the plan to move abroad. And from one year into my departure, yeah, it took me one year to, to move to Singapore, find a job, send CV, all of those process and to go moving abroad. I realized there was nothing left anymore in Germany. I realized I would not progress. I'm not going any further. I'm really just stuck in, 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 yeah, in this negative cycle, you know, seeing those old friends, seeing this old ex-boyfriends, the stories, everything that was around it. It was just, it was just really digging me down really, really down. Um, so that's actually what happens. And well, like I, before I went abroad, I got better. That one year I got a little bit better um, with my life, but you know, I gained all of those 10 kilos. I was very thin because it's really important for the music industry to be thin, to look good, to look healthy, to be sporty. Um, I, I lost uh, around about 10 kilos and within my depression, I gained all those 10 kilos back. I was very, you know, was not really taking care of myself. I was excessively drinking. I was a really lost person. I was really at a dark place at that time. And um, when I converted into Hinduism and went to the path of meditation, that's why my mind set changed forever. So. Yeah, that is actually a little bit, it's not, it's just the, 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 the surface of the story telling it in a compact way because there's a lot of things that of course occurred within in those 10 years, right? This is just a lot of, a lot of things. Looking back, of course, um, I could have done things so much different, right? I could have done so much better. I could have worked harder, but sometimes things are destined. I think I was not ready to take it. I was not ready to do it. I was not ready to... Put my uh, put myself out there. I was very unstable all with my mind. I was always faking a kind of self confidence that I only got when I was 20, uh, 4, 25, 26. So I really got self confident only kind of that age. I was always faking my self confidence. Uh, I'm, I always was a little bit melancholic. I was a little bit lost. 
although I always had a lot of energy and was a positive person that loved life and loved to go out, loved to create, loved to do music, but I was not ready.